this is Melina Bircher, your Texas Hill Country Patriot Realtor. And I just was doing a little market research today for a client that I have who's interested in an STR in Canyon Lake, Texas. That would be a short-term rental. So it is an investment property, but we do take a look at short-term rentals versus long-term rentals a little differently. So I wanted to uh, share with you the um, research that I do when helping a client with a specific need like this. And so I wanted to share with you uh, Canyon Lake, Texas, and um, how special it is to me. So I live uh, about 15 minutes from Canyon Lake. When I moved to Texas from Hawaii, uh, we chose New Braunfels, Canyon Lake area because of the many uh, ways you can get wet. So it is hot in Texas, but there are so many great recreational spots between New Braunfels, um, and Canyon Lake. So I have here to show you uh, this blue dot is where I'm located um, outside of Bulverde or inside of Bulverde, but um, outside of Bulverde town on the way to New Braunfels. So here in New Braunfels, there are, um, you can raft, you can um, do like these floating tube rides, stand up paddle, fishing. Um, there's all kinds of, you can even get fresh spring water from the springs there. It is absolutely beautiful here in New Braunfels. And that's just a stone throw from Canyon Lake where you can of course boat and um, fish and dive and swim and um, do a lot of great activities. So I wanted to give you some um, kind of idea of where Canyon Lake is located in Central Texas Hill Country. So I've got here New Braunfels, um, straight up the 35 going slightly east is Austin, and then all the way over here straight west from Austin is Fredericksburg, and then back down again south, a little bit southeast is San Antonio. So Canyon Lake is conveniently located right here, maybe an hour and 15 minutes to Austin, about an hour to Fredericksburg, and just under an hour to San Antonio. So it's a very convenient to do a staycation if you're a resident of any of those areas or um, uh, anywhere kind of within a few hours driving distance. There are so many, um, areas to visit in Canyon Lake. So here you go. Here's a little factoid on Canyon Lake. Uh, it is, had a population of about 31,000 says um, the 2020 census. So the number kind of a few of the numbers um, that I did from different areas um, of research yielded slightly different res results, but typically right around 30,000 is the um, uh, population number of Canyon Lake. Let's look at the next slide. Okay, so uh, Canyon Lake median home price is about 369k, um, which is slightly above the national average, slightly below the Comal County average, and also kind of very far above the Texas average or median. Um, and then the expected value um, increase over the next 12 months in Canyon Lake is 15.8%, so a very healthy expected rise. Um, USA, wow, is, is scaling at 27.7 over the next 12 months. That is just mind-blowing. Um, Median list price currently is 370 k and this is taking into account even um, uh, not only single family homes, but also condos and whatnot. And Canyon Lake, the numbers are a little harder to judge because there are lakefront properties for sale for, you know, 3 million and you can go all the way down to a trailer property for sale for 90,000. So it's, it, it is, you might have a few lakefront properties one month that throw the average way off or the median, not as far off as the average, but um, still, it's it's not like, um, you know, a suburbia kind of area where the houses are all homogenized and it's easier to get a, a real um, reading of what the numbers are doing by uh, the averages. So let's see. Um, 
86% of residents in Canyon Link own. And uh, if we, oops, I got too ahead of myself. Um, let's go back here. Okay, so um, we'll go forward. All right, uh, so here the population, um, my numbers are 25. So somewhere between 25 and 32,000, depending on, I guess, what you include in that. Um, there are a ton of vacation rentals in Canyon Lake. Uh, so STRs, what do we want to expect and consider? So what I wanted to get in uh, to with you is what the process that I'm, I'm uh, the questions that we ask before we invest in a short-term rental, okay? So is the property going to be used mainly for a short-term rental, is that what we're looking at as far as an ROI, return on investment? So if so, we really wanna focus on the cap rate, and I'll get into that a little bit later. Um, or personal use. So a lot of people would use the um, vacation rental for personal use and a short-term rental. So at that point, you would take into account, you know, what fits your family best and what activities your family does and what they, where you really want to be located, um, and take into consideration also what STRs are doing in that area and, and what is rented out more frequently. Is it the bigger house, the five bedrooms? Is it more like a one or two bedroom? Um, where's the sweet spot? And, and how do we take all those things into account to make a decision based on our needs? Um, or next, uh, long-term investment. So it may be that you want to use something for a short-term rental um, to take care of debt service, but you are looking at holding it long-term and really um, your main interest is making sure that that property is going to appreciate well over time. So we want to know what is your intention and for um, this investment and so that we can get you um, the biggest return. So if it's family enjoyment, we want to make sure that that home really suits your family's needs. And if it's straight up STR, then let's look at the short term numbers. Um, so a few things about Canyon Lake. Uh, Canyon Lake is unincorporated. So unlike Fredericksburg or New Braunfels, where there are a lot of uh, restrictions, uh, township restrictions on uh, short term rentals in Canyon Lake, the the really the what you have to consider is the HOA. So are there deed restrictions that are going to limit you? Um, and if so, there's nothing you can do about it. There's there's no way to fight that. I mean, some POAs or HOAs may um, uh, change that over time, but there's no way to know. And some may allow you to put in a uh, permit for one with your HOA, but it's, there's no guarantee it's going to be granted. So we, we want to take into account, um, obviously, when you're searching in Canyon Lake, which specific HOA you're going to go with, what their deed restrictions are, very important. And, um, and sometimes there's no HOA, and then it's great. You can do whatever you want. There's no restrictions. So, um, okay, and then another thing to consider is there are turnkey STRs, right? There are um, people, investors operating STRs very successfully, some not as successfully on Airbnb or Verbo, um, and they're selling them turnkey. And a lot of times they will get more for that property than they would if you're starting from scratch. So um, you may have a property that's permitted or allowable to have an STR, but the previous owner owners have not um, exercised that right or haven't you know used uh, had an STR at that property before, and so it's going to take a little more massaging. You know, if you've never um, done a short term rental, they're just like anything. There's a learning curve. Um, so again, next thing to take into account is, would you want to manage that yourself or, um, or find, uh, a firm or a management company that is typically going to take about 20%. So my firm, um, does manage, uh, short-term rentals. We actually have over 120 of them. We've got this, uh, amazing way to get your STR up to the top of the search and, and ratings in Verbo and Airbnb. 
um, which is very important. There's a lot of algorithms to take into consideration and a lot of you know pricing strategies to take into consideration um, when trying to get your STR, your short-term rental, to the top of the search engines on Verbo and Airbnb. Um, but there are some other things to consider as well, tax implications. So, um, you know, I'm not a tax professional, get with your tax professional, but um, the way, whether it's self-managed or um, you have a management firm uh, managing your STR, you it, it may qualify for a different bucket, Schedule C or Schedule E, depending on whether it's passive or whether it's a job. So if you're managing it yourself and you can justify that it's a job, um, a, one of the great draws of a short-term rental is that there is a huge um, allotable depreciation. So you can show a paper loss even though you may be showing um, a great return on investment, even after operating expenses, is one of those things you can show a paper loss. It's very profitable for um, tax purposes to have an STR in a lot of instances. So, you know, talking with your tax professional as, is it um, worthwhile for you to um, self-manage versus go with a management team, you know, and, and that's, a, there's a lot to take into consideration. And I'm always happy to walk you through those decision-making processes. Um, next, so what I wanted to, why I was doing this and wanted to share it with you is because I do have a client looking for an STR in Canyon Link. And this particular client, their main objective is immediate ROI from the short-term rental. So my secret weapon is Air DNA. Um, so I want to share that with you in a little bit, but moving on, um, I wanted to, I love to shop, right? Let's get down to it. What is my money going to get me? And so I wanted to show you a few different price points um, with a few different things to consider. Um, so here we go in the under 500K price point. So the first home I'm sharing with you um, is a turnkey STR. Okay, so this is a property currently on the market in Canyon Lake. Um, if you're interested, let me know and let's set up a time to see it. Um, but it is turnkey, it comes furnished, and it comes with a ranking on Airbnb and Verbo. And um, they're asking 450 k for it. It's um, a 3-2 for 1,276 square feet, which works out to about $353 per square foot. Now dollars per square foot is not the only thing we take into consideration. However, just to give you um, all the the different quantitative things that we take a look at, there you go. Um, this one has a fairly decent proximity to the lake, as you can see in the photos. Um, and it, it's quite small though, 1276 for a three two. Next is um, a sweet little house that is not a turnkey STR. Um, but it is allowed. So STRs are allowed in this HOA. Um, and this one is going for 435,000. It's also a 3-2, but it's a 1774 square feet. So it brings the price per square foot down significantly to 245. So obviously there's a lot of other factors and you'd wanna get in and see how you feel and see what the lay of the land is on the two properties. Um, but we're gonna take a look and plug in this first property to my secret weapon in a little bit. But I wanted to, um, because it is an existing STR, it's gonna have some data in my Air DNA um, search engine. So let me go on to the next. Um, here you go. So this is another consideration, long-term investment versus short-term consideration. So. The, the property on the left is um, 700,000. It's a five bedroom, two and a half bath. So it's pretty sizable. So it would get a really nice price point on Airbnb um, or Verbo as an SDR. You could probably even break it up and make, maybe make it into two units. Um, but it is definitely, it's, neither of these are turnkey STRs. They're both allowable though. Um, this house on the left for 700 is a five bedroom, two and a half bath, 2679 square feet, works out to about $261 per square foot on 0.165 acres. 
okay, as opposed to, which would be an amazing short-term rental investment because of um, the amount of bedrooms, right? So you can um, have more guests. Obviously, you could charge more if you have more bedrooms, more bathrooms. So this house on the left is almost 100000 more. It's seven ninety nine. dollars uh, also for three two slightly less square footage um, and slightly more or considerably more per square feet so it's three hundred and sixteen dollars per square foot however it um, sits on one point five four acres and is within a mile of the lake and has lake views they both have lake views so um back to what is our intention with the property that we're investing in this property on the left would potentially be a better short-term rental investment versus the property on the right you could do str but long term having that 1.54 acres where land is appreciating uh pretty significantly in canyon lake um a long for a long-term investment here so you're going to get the best of both worlds right um in this second uh scenario so just some things taking into consideration. Next, here is my secret weapon. So we're gonna have some fun taking a look at this Air D and D here. Just waiting for it to load. Air D N A. Did I say Air D and D? Air D and A. There we go. Okay, so here you go. Um, an overview of Canyon Lake shows us this. We have, let's see, average daily rate of all, uh, all from studio to 10 bedrooms, from lakefront to you can't even see the lake. You're looking at on average annual, any day of the year, 305 dollars right occupancy rate um over a year span would be 50 percent um revenue over the year or i'm sorry monthly revenue is going to be approximately average 34.73 okay so just to give you some and there are 680 active listings in Canyon Lake currently on Verbo or Airbnb. So um, quite a bit of competition there in, um, in the listings, but it is a very uh, popular vacation spot. So um, we could dive into this and really you can be in this space for a long time learning really interesting things about Canyon Lake and um, it tells you all the numbers. Now it's really hard to put 2022 numbers up against 2021 numbers, which was after COVID when everybody was going vacation crazy. We could go back out and live normally um, and everybody was going uh, Airbnb um, versus 2020 when, when we had the lockdown. So there was a, it's hard to compare those numbers over the last few years. Um, numbers are not going to be what they were last year, but they're not going to be terrible by any means. So let's take a look. I want to show you something really cool. So if we go into this rentalizer, okay, now that turnkey STR, let me just look at the address here so we put in the address of that um house that was for sale for four hundred and fifty thousand. the house in the first slide um it's a turnkey str okay and so because it's a turnkey str there is data in here but it's a three bedroom it's coming up a two bedroom let's update that and it tells you what your average daily rate is, occupancy, and this is based on projections for location, um, for square footage, all that good stuff. Okay, now here's, here's the cool thing. So we can plug in here what the sales price is. The sales price is, they're asking 450, which they'll probably get pretty close to that, if not over these days. Um, 
and we look at the projected rental revenue is going to be about 655 uh, and then operating expenses leaves uh, net operating income of uh, about 40, 45,000. So that, those calculations yield us a cap rate of 9.92. That's really good, really good cap rate. So even you might look at this little bitty house and say 450, yikes, but it's in a very booming um, Airbnb market. It's, um, ha it's a turnkey and it is projecting a cap rate of 9.92. So um, a good cap rate uh, would be anywhere between 8 and 12. So right around 10 is really solid. So this would be definitely a solid consideration. Now I wanted to put this alongside of that other property that we were taking a look at. Let's see, what was that? 1120 Canyon Bend. There it is. Um, and this one was also a 3-2. And this one is coming in at, it was 435. So it's yielding a lower cap rate. Um, and that could be due to location um, because it is a greater square footage, um, but it's, whatever details that this their machine takes into consideration, you know, in spitting out these numbers, they don't like it as much as the turnkey STR um, that we were considering as well. So this has a lower cap rate, but still a healthy cap rate, 8.3, 8.35. So we'd be looking at somewhere in, like I said, eight to 12% is a really good cap rate. So, um, let me put these side by side again for you so you could, they were these two. So these, that's, con, that's um, comparing these two properties against each other. The turnkey um, comes out as a much higher cap rate than the other. But these are all things to take into consideration when you're looking at an STR, um, Air D and D, a B and B, um, uh, sorry. Air DNA. Oh my gosh. Air DNA is an amazing tool. You do have to pay for it. So if you are serious about investing in a specific area, you might want to bite the bullet and pay for it. I have it. Um, I'm happy to do an analysis um, for free for you on any investment area. Like we said, um, you know, regulations have uh, tightened in Fredericksburg and there there is no way to get any new STR permits inside of the town proper in Fredericksburg. So STRs that are already permitted in Fredericksburg are going at a premium. Um, same thing with New Braunfels. Uh, so New Braunfels has a very um, uh, strict area that areas that are permitted to have Airbnbs and Canyon Lake is kind of like the wild, wild west. So you have to uh, know the deed restrictions on the, um, uh, the HOA that you're looking at and considering and really make sure that um, you talk to a licensed professional because MLS is not binding. Whatever they say in the MLS, and you might even look up the property and they have a listing on Verbo or Airbnb, that doesn't mean it's legal. So just a little FYI, um, please, please, please always check with a professional if you're trying to do a for sale by owner or, or you're trying to um, do your deal without a realtor, which I don't know why you would as a buyer because the, the seller pays for it anyway. Um, but just be educated, dot all your I's and cross all your T's because with an investment this big, if your main consideration is STR, you wanna make sure there's going to be no surprises down the road um, in a bad way where people tell you you can't do what you thought you could do um, with that. But STR, short-term rentals, it's hot, 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 and everybody seems to be doing it these days, but do it right. There's a lot of money to be made and a lot of fun to be had with short-term rentals, and Canyon Lake is a great place to do it. So reach out to me, your Texas Hill Country Patriot Realtor, Melina Bercher, brokered by eXp. Talk to you soon.